You're watching RTV News with me, Jane Mutoni. President Paul Kagame is currently on a state visit in Congo, Brazzaville, looking, for far, looking to further strengthen the good bilateral relations that exist between that country and Rwanda. Youth in Rwanda's Pentecostal church has vowed to make the truth about the genocide against the Tutsi known, even though some of them played a role in it. A very warm welcome to the news in details now. President Paul Kagame is currently on a state visit in Congo, Brazzaville, looking to further strengthen the good bilateral relations that exist between that country and Rwanda. On day two of his three-day state visit in Congo, Brazzaville, President Paul Kagame held a tete-a-tete -tete with his Congolese counterpart, His Excellency Denis Sungesu. President Kagame and President Sasungesu also presided over the signing of bilateral agreements in the sectors of economic partnership, mining, SMEs and handcrafts, as well as culture and arts. President Kagame also visited the town of Oyo, the hometown of President Sasungesu, and on Tuesday evening was expected to tour a farm there and meet for a tete-a-tete -tete dinner later with the Congolese president. During the commemoration of former employees of the Ministry of Health and what used to be the Ministry of Environment and Tourism, officials and staff of these ministries, including the survivors of the genocide against the Tutsi, requested for commemorations to never die down and instead be improved. These government employees say that remembering their fellow countrymen who worked well for the country and those who chose cowardly acts by taking part in the genocide against the Tutsi helps them to improve their work and better prepare for the future of the country. Our country has good governance that prioritizes the unity of Rwandans. Even in the workplace, employees are urged to live in harmony, operate in everything, and our principles give us hope that genocide will never happen again. What some of our former fellow countrymen did destroyed the country. So by remembering, we reflect on the negative impact their actions made and avoid them and instead do good by our country and setting a good example to our future generations. According to the Ministry of Health, 56 doctors and 73 nurses were involved in the killings of Tutsi during the genocide. 40 victims of the genocide who were employees in this ministry have been identified, while the ministry and other authorities are still investigating the nature of the genocide in the health sector. The ministry's staff has requested that the former employees who were involved in the rescue of the Tutsi at the time be recognized and appreciated. <laughs> We appreciate the dedication and insight of His Excellency the President of the Republic, his role in ending the genocide against the Tutsi, his concern for the survivors and how he values the lives of Rwandans and instilling these values in us as well. We appreciate the positive feedback from our discussions to identify the former employees of the Ministry of Health at the time who were involved in the rescue of the Tutsi as they were being hunted. We requested those in charge of employees in this ministry to identify those people so that they can be recognized and appreciated. Mutangu Hafredi, the Vice President of Ibuka, the umbrella organization that brings together genocide survivors, thanked the government and the private sector for their continued support for the genocide survivors, especially during this commemoration period. It's a difficult time, but this commemoration event, as we remember the victims of the genocide and the integrity they possessed, it strengthens us. During this commemoration event, it was requested that discussions on the history of the genocide against the Tutsi be provided at various institutions to strengthen unity and fight the spread of genocide ideologies. On Tuesday, workers of companies that work at the Kigali International Airport commemorated the former staff of the airport that were killed in the 1994 genocide against the Tutsi. During the commemoration event, staff members were encouraged to make good choices that lead to the sustainability development of the country and pointed out, pointed out by the Minister of State in charge of infrastructure, Engineer Patricia Owase. 
Everyone has choices to make every day. As they say, everyone has 24 hours every morning. You have the opportunity to decide what to do in that time you get. The first choice to make is that you should choose what you want to be and how you want to live. If only in these times we could learn to make right choices. Our country, in its vision of 2050, in a few years like 28 years to come, we wish everyone to be in a safe, good and prosperous country. Today we have a duty to strive for it, to choose it and to believe that it is possible. To achieve this, no one should be left behind, especially genocide survivors. The staff members that were in commemoration ceremony are members of the Rwanda Civil Aviation Authority, Rwanda Airports Company, Rwanda and Akajira Aviation. In Rwanda's Pentecostal Church have vowed to make the truth about the genocide against the Tutsi known, even though some of them played a role in it. The young men and women made the vow after visiting the Kigali Genocide Memorial on Tuesday. The youth were given a tour of the memorial and given explanations about Rwanda's history and the genocide against the Tutsi. Afterwards, they paid their respects at the graves of the more than a quarter of a million victims buried there. I believe my role is continuing to teach that the genocide took place in our country and many bad things resulted because of it, but that as young people we must work to build the country we desire. It affected me terribly, even though I was born after the genocide. My father committed atrocities and I feel as though I am the one who bears the debt that must be paid for what he did. I believe that had I been alive at that time, I would have saved many lives because our grandfather was a very important man and could have hidden people. Now, however, I want to help people who struggle with trauma. I too was affected and would give anything for people to heal from the wounds caused by the genocide. Pentecostal church officials are calling on parents to tell their children the truth about what happened. Those who prepared the genocide also prepared how they would negate and deny it. And they are doing that now using the youth. Tarnishing our youth is tarnishing our future as a country. All of our nation-building efforts should therefore go into the youth so that we can secure a future by telling them the truth about what really happened. Their parents know the truth, and if they want to build a good country, they must tell their children the truth. The Pentecostal Church of Rwanda is working to protect the country's young people from the poisonous ideologies sometimes found on social media sites and elsewhere, with the objective of ensuring that they are not corrupted with dangerous notions. The British investigative journalist and author Linda Melvin has been speaking at the Kigali Memorial and noted that the unwillingness of the UN Security Council to admit that what was happening in Rwanda in 1994 was genocide is what led to the horrifically large loss of life in such a short period of time. What informed my work was that somebody gave me an account of those secret council meetings held to discuss Rwanda. The whole focus of the council at the time was on former Yugoslavia, where a peacekeeping mission of 70,000 had been created. For Rwanda, 2,500. And the immediate reaction was to withdraw the peacekeepers. I think one of the most shocking events, though, was on April the 29th, when the Council in secret held an eight-hour debate about the use of the word genocide in relation to Rwanda. The UK, David Haney, our ambassador, and the US ambassador, Madeleine Albright, fought against the use of the word. They argued for hours that the word should not be used. I think that that is absolutely crucial. One, to the history of the 1948 Genocide Convention, 
which they were so happy to ignore, and two, on how the Council operates. The founders of the UN determined that the Council meetings should be held in open session so that each government would be held accountable for the decisions taken and indeed what was said. 28 years later, there has been absolutely no accountability at all of how the Council operated at that time and what each individual government said. It is to our shame. The author is also calling for more research to be carried out as a way of fighting those who negate and deny the genocide against the Tutsi. We do have a problem at the moment with fake news and disinformation. We seem to be what Jan called a post-truth age. I don't think it will last, but it's extremely dangerous. And we have journalists in the UK who are using the genocide against the Tutsi for their own political ends. As you know, Rwanda is a member of the, the Commonwealth, and there are journalists who want to uh, stop this membership. So they use a distorted version of the genocide against the Tutsi to try to stop, one, the Commonwealth heads of state, which is shortly to happen here, and two, to stop aid. My own opinion is that we should not argue with denialists and negationists because it's like arguing with people who believe there's a flat earth. From my own point of view, I think that re research must continue, that the more facts that we have in our armory, the more we can dismiss these pernicious campaigns, which, as far as I can see in the UK, continue uh, to gain power. Those present during the discussions that included a large number of other researchers and authors agreed that efforts need to be combined to fight those who negate and deny the genocide against the Tutsi. UNDP officials and staff in Rwanda have held a ceremony to remember former UN employees who were killed during the 1994 genocide against the Tutsi. Take a look. The ceremony was held at the UNDP Rwanda headquarters in Kigali and the relatives of the slain former employees commended the fact that the UN admitted its shortcomings when it comes to the genocide against the Tutsi and has taken steps to address them. <laughs> Certainly there was gross negligence, but they have been revising the way they do things. The fact is people make mistakes and correcting oneself is never easy. But as time passes, they have been making an effort. So far, 64 former UN employees here in Rwanda are known to have been killed in 1994 during the genocide that was perpetrated against the Tutsi. But honoring them for us, is a moment to reflect on this Kubica 28 and to commit our resolve that never again be reality everywhere in the world. Rwanda is showing that it is the way to go, equality, justice, and a better world. And that's a development trajectory of Rwanda, and we are happy to be a trusted partner after the difficult moments. That Government officials present also acknowledge that the UN has been working to right its wrongs. Uh, we are remembering uh, our people, we are also remembering UN staff that passed away uh, out of genocide, genocide against the Tutsi. Uh, and as a country, we need to remember them because it, they, they also passed away because of their work that they were doing for our country. So it's very important to remember them. In 2018, the UN finally began to address the genocide against the Tutsi by its proper name, and the 7th of April is the UN's International Day of Reflection on the 1994 genocide against the Tutsi in Rwanda. In 2014, the UN Security Council adopted a resolution punishing anyone who negates and denies the genocide against the Tutsi. On behalf of the entire news production team, thank you so much for your company. I'm Jane Mutoni.